Hello, uh, this video is going to recap all of the things I showed in the first class. Uh, the first class tutorial, uh, something went wrong and everything kind of crashed, so we lost all the video. So I'm just going to go over everything that I showed uh, again, and so uh, this way you will be able to remember what uh, I did. So the first thing I did was show you guys how to find data for uh, basically any site in the world. I recommend going to this site right here, download.geofabric.de. Um, and if you go there, you can see, basically download information for pretty much any site in the world here. So uh, for the demo that I did on the first day of class, I went to North America and downloaded the Missouri data set right here. And you're gonna always wanna download this uh, item here, which is the SHP shapefile. None of the other things here actually uh, are useful in ArcMap. The other resource that I mentioned was the National Map Viewer, and that is this link right here, viewer.nationalmap.gov uh, slash basic. Uh, this is where you go to get all your uh, DEM elevation data. And the way you do that is you click on um, this guy right here, elevation products, and you either select one of the resolutions for your DEM image. I recommend if possible getting one ninth or one third arc second data. You can actually select multiple ones at the same time and see all the options for the different resolutions out there. And then what you do is you zoom into the site that you want elevation data for. In this case, uh, I download information for Forest Park in St. Louis. You click on this little box uh, bubble up here, draw a rounding box around the region that you want data for. Then click on finding products. It's gonna load up all the items that you can find in this particular region. And to double check which uh, which one of these items goes within this box. You can click on this thumbnail button here. You can kind of see what it is. So for the demo, I downloaded this one ninth arc second uh, object here. And all you do to download is click on this shopping cart item and go to uh, view cart. Then you can just click on download here to get this product done. Now to bring data into ArcMap itself, uh, the way you, what you do is you go to the Arc Catalog, which is this yellow uh, button up here, Catalog. If you click on that, it brings up the catalog on the side here. And you, what you want to do is you want to connect to the folder that you save all your shape files to. So the way you do that is you click on this little plus icon, connect to folder, and then navigate to the location where the data is saved. I just saved it in my Dropbox right here, hit enter, and then when that's done, uh, a new folder pops out on the side with all the data sets that you downloaded. And so uh, in the tutorial, I brought in the road layer and that is this one right here. So I just drag this in like so. And uh, all the data from that particular shape file is brought into ArcMap. The first thing you always wanna do when you bring in data is to set the coordinate system to the, to the site that you wanna work with. So in the case of St. Louis, uh, you wanna use the uh, NAD 1983 Missouri East coordinate system. If you don't know which coordinate system you use for your site, just search for the state, in this case, Missouri. Uh, go to state plane, uh, and then go to NAD 1983 US feet. And then since we are in the Eastern side of Missouri, you wanna do NAD 1983 Missouri East. So with this highlighted, just click okay. Uh, click yes on this. Now you see the map has now uh, been warped to the correct coordinate system. This will look correct and uh, be an accurate representation of the, of the state of Missouri. Um, and then we're gonna zoom into our city of St. Louis right here, like so. And as you can see right now, the entire map is loading really slowly. So the way we can speed this up is to simply take the only the information that we need, which is the information or the roads in the region of this St. Louis area and then export that as its own shape file. So the way you do that is to right click on the layer, go to data, export data, and then uh, make sure you select export all features in view extent. And that means it will just only export the shape files that are within the data frame, which is this white box. Make sure you set the coordinate system to be the same as the data frame so that it inherits the coordinate system that you set uh, just a second ago, NAD 1983 Missouri East, and then just choose a location. So I'm just gonna save this in my uh, Dropbox right here. And I'll call this Rhodes St. Louis. I click okay. Just give it a second. And 
it's going to say, do you want to add that exported data to the map as a layer? Click yes. Uh, and then remove the old layer. And now you can see that your map runs much faster because there's less information to load. To view information about each shapefile, the way you do that is you click on this I button up here, identify, and then you can click on any uh, feature here and we'll bring up the properties for that particular feature. Or you can observe just by right clicking on the layer and going to attribute table right here. And this is the same exact information, but just all viewable at the same time. The next thing I did was I showed you how to change the symbology of this uh, map here. So the way you adjust that is to double click on the layer that you want to adjust. And then go to the symbology tab. And then here on the side, it gives you all the options for how you want to symbolize uh, the features of this map. So in this case, we're going to symbolize it um, by the F class. Um, and then you want to click on all add, all add all values, and then it's going to bring in all the uh, categories of this F class. So the motorway, pedestrian, residential, et cetera, et cetera. If you click on apply, it's going to add make turn all, turn all the lines uh, into the color that uh, its category falls in. <clears throat> and then the way to adjust all these is you can click on one of the objects. Let's say we click on uh, primary right here. You can click on the line next to it or double click on it. You can change the color, let's make it whatever, uh, black, two point width, and click OK, and click Apply, and you can adjust that here. Or you can do everything at once by holding uh, Shift, selecting everything together, right-clicking, going to Properties for Selected Symbols, and you can make everything, say, uh, one of these default options on the side, click Apply, and everything's the same. Or you can click, say, uh, a few options. I'm holding control now, uh, so control selection. Let me primary, secondary, tertiary properties for selected symbols. Let's make these, you know, one point with a dark blue color. Click apply. Um, I actually didn't do much. Let me do that again. Properties for selected symbols. Let's do two points. Click apply. And you can kind of see you can adjust the hierarchy of the road values that way. So one thing I did not show in the first class tutorial was actually how to, you know, do some basic data management. So let's say, you know, you made this road shape out here, but, you know, your site is really just Forest Park, for instance. You know, you really only needed this much information. You didn't need all that other context for, for, for just as an example. And you just want to delete this entire layer here. Um, the way you do that is you go to the ARC catalog and you uh, find that shape file on the side and you just delete it by right clicking on it and uh, delete like that and you would click on yes to confirm deletion this basically kills the entire shape file and uh, removes it from your hard drive entirely so if you're worried about say hard drive space and you're making a bunch of shape files and uh, you're running out of room and you need to clean up your library of data sets that's how you would actually delete data is to delete it using our catalog I do not recommend deleting data straight off of your browser. So for instance, you these roads, uh, St. Louis uh, layers right here, which are the same as this here, I would not recommend just shift selecting everything here and deleting that. That's actually uh, not a good way to delete data. It's better just to delete it straight from the art catalog. This will remove everything at once. Another thing I, got, I showed you guys was how to set bookmarks. So let's say you want this uh, data frame extends here to be remembered as part of your file. You can Let's say you set this right here. You can go to bookmarks, create bookmark called Forest Park. And now if you zoom out and move around, do work in other areas of the map, you can go back straight back to it just by going to bookmarks um, and Forest Park like that. And so that's how you save views in ArcMap. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to cut contours for a site. So for that, you need the digital elevation model uh, DEM file that you downloaded from the National Map Viewer. So I have that right here. It's the IMG file, uh, this one right here. So you drag that into your document and then this image comes up. This is basically pure elevation data. Um, so the way you cut contours is first you pick your extents that you want to cut contours for. Let's say you want to cut you know, the entire forest park area. You want to use either the 3D analyst or the spatial analyst tools. Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, in your extensions here you have uh, all these checked, uh, 3D Analyst and Spatial Analyst here. And the way you find those tools is in 3D Analyst, uh, it's in Raster Surface Contour, or in Spatial Analyst, it's in Surface Contour. Both of these work equally uh, the same. 
So this time I'm gonna use spatial analyst, so double click on contour, drag in your raster, just by clicking and dragging it. I recommend leaving the, this thing here uh, as is. I don't recommend changing that. It works better just leaving it in the default geo database. Your contour interval is whatever unit you want it to be. So let's just do one, let's say one foot, and then leave this as zero. And then for this number here, uh, if you want it to the contour interval to be one meter, uh, you leave this as one. If you want it to be one feet, you gotta add the conversion factor for meters, which is 3.28084. If you can't remember that number, if you have this Z factor line selected and also the help sidebar here, it gives you that conversion factor uh, right at the very bottom, 3.2808. Before you click OK, you wanna go to this environments button here. You wanna go to uh, processing extent and set, set it to as uh, same as display. And this means it's only going to cut contours for what you see in the data frame. So click OK, click OK. And just let that process. Obviously, the more stuff that you want to cut contours for, the longer it takes. Um, and actually, in this case, I cut contours at one foot intervals, so it's going to take even longer. But there you go. It's beautiful. You can actually symbolize this. Uh, using the symbology tools. So of course symbology, go to, in this case, quantities, go to the value field and set the contour to be um, the value to represent. And if you click apply, you see that your contours now have a really nice, pretty color ramp associated with it, like so. So now you can see the low areas of site, the high areas of site, uh, and all that fun stuff. Now you wanna, when you're ready to export this information to AutoCAD, you want to go to the attribute table for this data set, click on the add field option here. We're gonna set this as a double, call this field elevation, spelled exactly like that. Click okay. Right click on the column elevation, go to field calculator, set elevation to be equal to the contour just by double clicking on this contour line here. And then you're done. And then all you need to do is right click on this guy, data, export to CAD. I'm actually going to export this road layer at the same time. Uh, data type 2013 DWG is perfectly fine. Pick a location. I'm just going to save on my desktop. I'll call this one uh, Forest, Forest Park. <clears throat> and this is very important. Uh, you always want to go to the environments tab, set the output coordinates to be same as display and set the processing extent to be same as display. Oops, same as display. And set the cartography to be same as display. These are all three things you need to do before you export to AutoCAD. And what this does is just going to basically mean, means the export is going to uh, uh, inherit the correct units uh, of feet. Because remember, we set the coordinate system of this entire map to feet uh, before we did anything else. So this is gonna export to CAD, it takes a minute to do. When it's done, uh, a new layer is added to your Archimac document, which is the uh, CAD layer um, right here. Uh, I recommend just removing it whenever it's done, like so. And then all you need to do is just open that CAD file in AutoCAD or Rhino. Okay, so we have Rhino open right now. So I'm just gonna open that CAD file, Forest Park. And when in this DWG import options, you always want the model units here to be set to the unit of your coordinate system. So in this case, it's feet. If your coordinate system is in meters, then you always wanna make sure your coordinate, that the unit is in meters. And now as you can see here, um, uh, I'm turn off the road layer here. The contours, it's a bit hard to see with this yellow. Uh, the contours now are, were imported with their elevation. So this is a perfectly good 3D uh, drawing. Um, and that's pretty much, as far as I can think, the, all the stuff I showed for the first day of class um, in terms of all the basics of getting data, finding data, um, and then bring that data into AutoCAD. So um, yeah, that should be it. Actually, there was one more thing I forgot, and that's how to uh, use the hacking method in order to uh, get data off of things like uh, live web maps that you find online. Uh, the way you do that is you find one of these web maps um, from various city, county websites. In this case, this is St. Louis County here. 
if you find one of these guys here, uh, what you want to do is you want to go to in Google Chrome. It works best to Google Chrome. Just go to the tools and developer tools right here and the network tab up here. Uh, refresh the page and when you refresh the page, uh, this whole thing here uh, reloads with uh, the sources, the data sources that it's drawing that information from. And so what you're looking for are, is a link, uh, like for instance this one right here where it says ArcGIS slash REST slash services. So copy that, so copy link address, and then you might just open a Word or a text document and then just paste that link in that text document and then only copy the URL up to REST services. Copy that, then go to ArcMap. You want to go to the Arc Catalog. You want to go to the GIS servers, servers option, then click on Add ArcGIS Server. Uh, have the first bubble option selected here. Paste that REST services um, URL in there and click on finish. And then pay attention to this side, uh, the, the right side here. Um, just pay attention to it. After a second passes, a new link to um, that particular uh, web service should pop up. Oops. And there it is right here. So then what you can do is you can just bring in data uh, from this resource. So this resource has aerials. Um, and this is being uh, pulled live from online. Um, actually, this has a pretty nice resource, aerials, aerial imagery. So aerial imagery from 1937. I didn't show this in class, but let's see what it is. I just dragged it in. Should load in a second. Uh, there it is, and so we can observe what our campus looked like at 1937, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, and yep, that's it. That's how you pull information uh, off of the web uh, using that method. So that's it.